Hello everyone, this is Ants Portugal here and today I'm here for the second episode of the series Ant Care Species Guide. Today we're going to take a look at the species from the genus Campanotus. This genus is commonly called sugar ant and carpenter ant in Australia or the US and Canada respectively. So the species that I'm going to be talking about in specifics today will be Campanotus barbaricus that actually exists in Europe. And you know the drill, I'm not good with pronouncing scientific names, so here we go. Here's my friend Jeff, also known as Google Translator Guy. Campanotus barbaricus. See? Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Now, um, Campanotus barbaricus is a species that exists all over the Mediterranean, although they are more prominently found in Europe, either it be south or actually in the center parts of Europe. This species is very big. It's a very big ant and it's considered to be technically the largest ant species in all Europe. And you know, Europe has very basic ants, so it's not a, a huge deal, but they are technically the biggest ant we have here. Uh, being the biggest ant, the queen of these species measures somewhere around 17 millimeters and the workers can vary from 8 to about 17 millimeters as well. They have the, the different castes of the, the species they have minor media and major workers and they all have the same function even though they have different sizes and a little bit different body plan as the majors have a bigger head in relation to the body size they have all the same function and tasks within the colony all of them forage all of them fight for the for the defense of the nest and all of them get prey and bring them back all of them do everything in this species i found i find that there really isn't a different from minor to major when it comes to function even though okay uh, majors may be more effective at some things and minors may be more effective at other things so uh, this colony gets to huge numbers as all, all campanotas have a tendency to get to huge numbers and this this species gets to somewhere around 10,000 individuals in one colony and they only have one queen, mind. They, they are monogenous and they only have one queen per colony. This queen lays all the eggs that turn into all the workers in this gigantic colony, but these ants are big and the bigger the, the ants are, the, the, the longer the time it will take for them to develop from egg to adult worker and in Campanotus barbaricus, I'd say they take about a month to get from a single egg to a single worker. And this makes it so that this species takes a long time to grow. Also, this species hibernates, which means that for about three months, a year, the queen will stop laying eggs. And all activity will stop, actually. So this, this will make so that the colony takes a long time to grow. And there, there's one more thing, is that in almost all Campanotus species, the queen will take periodic breaks from laying eggs. She'll stop like a month or two just because she wants to. It's to conserve energy and to ensure that she lives longer. And this makes it so that it takes even longer for the, the species to, to rise to the full glory of a 10,000 individuals colony. Um, you know, when you get this, this species, if you live in the place where they're from, it's very, very, very easy to keep them. And I'll tell you why. It's because they, they live in a habitat of semi-savanna-like conditions, but in Europe, which means it's colder, so they hibernate. This makes it so that they do not need a lot of humidity. And as always, I'll throw some numbers in, but what you should always do is in, in, in regards to temperature and humidity, you should always give your ants a gradient and let them choose for you because you never know what they actually prefer and they may stress out if they don't, they don't have any way to achieve that. So th these are very hardy ants actually, but let me, let me tell you the numbers. So for humidity, I would say the nest has to be somewhere around 50 to 60 percent humidity you can go a little higher you can go a little lower but just remember the gradient always give them a gradient now temperature 
you can keep them at anywhere between 18 to 24 Celsius. And if it drops be, uh, below 15 Celsius, they will enter the, the hibernation state. If you want, you can do it a little higher. If you do it a little lower, they might hibernate. And if you do it a little lower, when they're not supposed to be hibernating, that might kill them. So they can take a lot of shifts in the, the temperature gradient. They can, I mean, if you have the temperature rise up to about 30 degrees, they'll be just fine. Um, just, just pay attention to not make, to try not to make it fluctuate very quickly. Okay, if it's, if it's a gradual change, they'll be just fine. Okay. Uh, next thing I should be talking about today is um, how you care for them if you find a queen. Well, the queen of these species works alone as they are monogenous and she's claustral, which means that she doesn't have to eat until the first workers arrive, the first workers a close from the pupae. Uh, that means it's easy just with them in a test tube set up, with them in the dark, check them every week. And when they have workers, then you can start taking care of them. Test tube setups, always videos in the, air in the internet telling you how to make them. And proper queen care in the first month or so will be very easy, very practical. Then you have to take to pay attention to their diet. Now, these are carpenter ants in the Campanotas. And their Aussie name is sugar ants. And it, it's, it's very, very easy to know why. They love their sugar. They love their sweets. It, um, whether it be honey, sugar water, or fruits. Fruits have a lot of sweet in them. And the Campanotas normally loves these sort of things. But you have to pay attention to these things when they are a small colony. I don't see anyone telling this on YouTube, saying this on YouTube, but... When you have a small colony that still lives in a test tube or in a tubs and tube setup, very small, you should take into consideration that they will not eat everything. They will be very picky and they will eat very little amounts of food. They're ants, they're small, and they are in little numbers in this case. So you have to pay attention to put a very little amount of honey, very little amount of sweets because sweets rot fast and they they become they become breeding grounds for fungus and other stuff that can harm your ants so you have to pay attention to that and um i i suggest that you feed them honey and insects only when they're small when they're a small colony because honey is uh, the most hardy sweet you can get it won't go bad for a long time and it won't develop anything that can harm your ants and insects, they will always be ready to eat insects. And you can put, and insects, other insects are also small, so you can put a little piece of insect or an entire little insect and you can take it out. Just be careful about not putting too much food or food that decays fast in a small colony because they will not be able to manage it. And they would not get that food inside the nest if they were in the wild. Now, climate. I've told you the numbers, I've told you everything you need to know, so just just pay attention to don't fluctuate them very fast. If you want to hibernate them, make sure the temperature lowers slowly and steadily to the numbers you want them at. Okay, then setup. It's, uh, it's very, very, very cool to make setups for Campanotas, for all Campanotas ants, because they can live in everything. They, they, they nest underground, they nest in, in wood, in rotten wood, and they, they don't chew through anything. They are just big ants. You have to take into consideration their size, especially when you're doing the, tu the tubing to connect stuff. If you connect an outworld to a nest using a tube, make sure that like two ants can crawl in the tube at the same time. Because... If not, then they will get a sort of traffic jam and it might not be hurtful for them in the early stages, but later on it will be difficult for them to manage around that and they'll be stressing out and they'll be trying to find ways to make a bigger 
make a bigger a bigger traffic way for the, the nest and to the outworld. Also, if you want to, you can make an outworld and just put a log in there, a rotting log, and they'll nest in it. Maybe. Depends on the species. Camponotus barbaricus, I haven't really had any luck with them living in wood. And you have to and wood develops fungus really quickly if you don't have a proper ventilation in the outer world. Also also you have to to pay attention to one thing about this species is that they do not sting at all, they do not spray formic acid at all, but they, they can give you a nasty bite and they will bite down fast and they actually they they may seem cute for ants but they actually have big mandibles and although they they can't break they can't break skin i i think they can't break skin i've been bitten by some and it hasn't break broken my skin but it it may hurt a little um uh, i wouldn't complain about a bite from this species from this species but taking into consideration it's not a mild bite it's something else a little bit more powerful but don't don't worry about don't about it don't let it scare you because almost all camponotas are very beginner friendly you see camponotas barbaricus is fun to watch they have an excellent behavior there when when as you you will notice that uh, as the colony grows in numbers the individual ant grows in confidence as more numbers there are the more expendable each individual life is. So they, they go about running everywhere and always looking for food, always being active. And it's a blast to just watch them do their thing. They're big, they're easy. You don't have to use any, any lenses to watch them properly. It's very, very nice. 